Hello and welcome to this new episode of Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers podcast. I'm Mathilde and I'm your host. I'm an inner transformation mentor supporting women in healing mother wounds through women's circles and through the 101 10 weeks program. To know more about these offerings, check out my website, womenreclaimingtheirfullness.me. Now today, it's a quick episode to complete the episode of last week about uh, the roadmap to boundary setting, the three-step process to setting your boundaries. So last week we spoke about this three-step process to set your boundaries. And today I want to talk about what are the top three mistakes that we end up making when we are setting boundaries that make our boundaries unsuccessful every time. When we make these three mistakes, the boundaries are not going to hold. They're not going to be successful. They're not going to be strong enough. And that's going to lead to frustration. And it's going to lead to feeling like we're doing we're doing it wrong and and that this, maybe the situation is hopeless and that we can't set boundaries and, and so on and so forth. So um, if you haven't listened to the episode of last week, the three-step process to boundary setting, to successful boundary setting, please do, as that's going to give you the full idea as to how uh, to go about setting boundaries in a successful way. It details the entire process. And if you haven't already, also there is available a free uh, little ebook, like it's it's a very short ebook to give you the roadmap to boundary setting. It's a tool that you can use anytime that you want to set your boundaries so that you can implement the steps easily and in a clear way. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, you can go and get that now. Uh, it's in the description of the episode. You can find the link there. Okay, so we spoke about how to set boundaries. And I know for many of us, this is like, that's why I'm, I'm doing another episode on this. this is one of the biggest challenges i i receive emails constantly um and comments and messages about how hard it is to set boundaries how challenging it is um how our our mothers don't listen don't accept the boundaries they react badly um they make scenes they go even worse, they get even worse sometimes. Um, and all of that is stuff that actually really does happen. When we set boundaries, we can get all sorts of reactions from our mothers. Um, a narcissist in general won't like boundaries. They really don't. So there's nothing wrong with you. They just really don't like boundaries. And a narcissistic mother is no exception. She won't like boundaries. And we said that before. A narcissistic mother trains you from a very young age, from when you're very, very small, to believe that boundaries are not a good thing, that you're a bad daughter if you set boundaries. And so this gets a lot of guilt mixed into the picture. We try to set boundaries, but we feel a lot of guilt that goes with that. So it gets quite intense, the whole process of boundary setting. And when we actually get to the point where we can't take the behavior of our mothers any longer and we really need to set boundaries, then that that gets very challenging. So this is why I want to talk about these three mistakes that we really need to stop making. And if you recognize yourself in any of these, what I'm going to say, please know that it's really important not to judge yourself, not to beat yourself up, We've all been there, we've all done it. I've been there many times in my own relationship with my narcissistic mother and with other narcissistic members of my family. So I totally get it. And remember also that setting boundaries is not a one time event. It's a practice skill and it's something that you just consistently do more and more and more. 
so that you get really good at it. So if you don't feel like you're good at it yet, that's okay. You can practice. You can practice and you can practice. So the first, let's get to the first thing, the first mistake that we do. And, and also I want to say I'm going to these mistakes just so it's sort of clear, but there are no failures and there are no mistakes, okay? They're only experiences. So again, if you have done any of these things or if you find that even after listening this episode to this episode, you still end up doing this at times, that's okay. That's just an experience. An experience is something that you look back and you go, okay, I need to do something different here. What can I change? What is one thing I can implement that is going to be different, that is going to make this work better for me? Okay, that's what you want to go, what you want to think about it when this, when you feel you've made a so-called mistake. So I am calling them mistakes today to just for clarity of communication, but there are no mistakes, there are no failures, it's purely experience, always. So the first point I want to make is that, as we mentioned in the other episode, setting boundaries is a three steps process okay we said it's prepare that's the first step then state and then maintain so the first mistake that we make very very often is to only focus on state we only focus on uh, focus on the statement part on stating your boundary forgetting about the preparation and without maintaining it afterwards forgetting that we still are at work in the after part to maintain it so to focus only on the stating is going to make your boundary really weak first of all it's going to have you arriving to the point where you have to state your boundary in a already in a place where you're not up for the task because if you haven't prepared and I'm not going to go through all the steps of preparing. Again, if you haven't listened to the other episode, do that. And also download the roadmap to boundary setting. It's for, it's free and it's there for you. So you have all the steps and you have everything clear. But within the preparation part, there are five steps that are really important that allow you to actually get to the boundary to the moment when you're speaking your boundary to your mother that you're stronger and your statement it's going to be powerful because of what you've done in the preparation part and I know that this sounds like a lot of work but to actually suffer through stating a boundary when you haven't prepared is a lot more work and it's a lot more frustrating it's a lot more hurtful and there's going to be way more chances that your boundary is not going to work so you would have been through all of that pain and then it doesn't even work so putting in the effort of preparing before you set your boundary before you state it it's going to really 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 help you and it's going to make it easier on the long run because the more you prepare, especially as you're beginning to practice this, the, you're building resilience. So your preparation is going to build on itself. You're going to be more and more prepared with less time spent preparing as you progressively go ahead with this. So it's no wasted effort. It's actually really, really important. So preparing is important. And then you state and then maintaining it. Because when we state it without maintaining it, then that's just a very weak boundary. A big part of when we forget about maintaining, a big issue that happens is that we are not implementing consequences. And sometimes we haven't even stated consequences in the first place. And that's a big deal because... Without consequences, your boundary is weak and also impossible to implement because it relies on your mother taking it on board. And you know well, as well as I do, that relying on your mother is not a good thing. It's not. It's not helpful. If you say, for, so let's, let's talk about an example. If you say to your mother, that's your stated boundary, I won't accept you talking to me like that. That's a good statement. It's an I statement. 
It's very clear, it's concise. You may say it with a calm and firm tone. You're doing everything by the book. You've read your roadmap to boundary setting at the statement part and you've done it by the book. So you say, I won't accept you talking to me like that. But this is weak because this relies on your mother understanding that how she's talking to you is not on and also for her to respect this statement of her own free will. Which I know that if we were talking to someone that was like not a narcissist, that would all be fine. But it's not. That's not the situation. So instead, if you say, I won't accept you talking to me like that, if you continue with this stone, I will leave. Here's your consequence. Okay, now you're in control and you're not relying on her anymore because you are the one that is going to implement that consequence. If she indeed continues talking to you in whatever insulting tone she was talking to you, you will indeed leave. So the consequence is essential. And, and that is like a really key part of the maintaining uh, phase of setting your boundary. So that's the first big mistake that we end up making. We're all focused on the statement part and we forget that we need to prepare first and then we forget that we need to maintain by implementing consequences. That's really, really important. When you stay, and I know that you could say, oh, but like this sounds horrible. It sounds like I'm threatening my mother. You're, it's not threatening, it's implementing consequences because it's like talking to a little toddler. That's what happens when you're dealing with a narcissist. You're talking to a toddler. You're talking to a child at a very, very, very undeveloped stage. So you need to give clear statement and you need to give consequences. Not threatening. It's not like... A, uh, yeah, it's not a threat. You're not going to be mean to them. You're just going to say that you're not going to accept that and if they continue this is what you're going to do doesn't make them a bad person there's no blaming there's no shaming there's no yelling there's nothing it's just i won't accept that and if you continue this is the consequence and then you stick with the consequence that's really important so that's the first thing the second point that i want to make the second so-called mistake that we might end up making is misplaced expectations. So what does that mean? If, <clears throat> if you're talking to your mother and you're expecting to talk with a person that will understand, that will get it, that will respect what you're saying because that is what reasonable people do, that she might even change her behavior that she will all of a sudden have a moment where she realizes the sort of mother that she's been up until now and she will just completely apologize and get it and fully respect what you're saying. That's a very misplaced expectation. And also this leads to the illusion that we can explain things to our narcissistic mothers and that they will get it which leads to disappointment and hurt when they don't get it and it also leads to frustration when you're trying to explain and you're <clears throat> spending hours and hours in conversation long excruciating conversations where she is actually in the lead of the conversation although you don't you mightn't realize that in the moment, but you come out of that conversation absolutely drained, exhausted, frustrated, possibly in tears. Then it takes you weeks to recover. And you think you've set a boundary, but you haven't. You've just been caught in a cycle and she's used that to completely control you. And by the end of it, you haven't moved anywhere. And the next time that the similar situation arises, it's like you haven't even said anything it's like that boundary was never set because actually it wasn't you came into the conversation thinking you could explain thinking you could make her understand and that's not gonna happen 
Now, what can also happen in here, I don't know, have you noticed how when you try to explain, it nearly always goes to arguing because that the her lack of understanding when we're expecting her to leads to frustration, leads to frustration from your part. Then you start trying to explain more. You're giving away a heap of information that she can use and weaponize against you. So then she starts hurting you. So it either ends up in a yelling match or it ends up in tears. And hers if she likes playing the victim and that's the way she goes about it or yours if she gets aggressive. So it's never a good thing to explain is never a good thing to actually expect that she will understand. The best expectation to have is that she actually won't understand and she'll probably make a scene and that she'll react using some of her favorite tactics, whatever, like you, you know your mother, so you know what her favorite tactics are, whether that is more going into victim, whether it's getting aggressive, whether it's making a scene, whether it's going on... Uh, contacting every single flying monkey she can reach out to, whether it is love bombing and whether it is a mix of a few of these things because sometimes they can use a few. Gaslighting, you name it, whatever it is the thing that your mother does whenever you are attempting to set a boundary, expect that. So we go back to the three steps. When you are in your preparation phase, you are prepared for that that is going to happen and you have strong if thens if she reacts like that then i will do such and such so if she starts crying then i will state my boundary on crying with the consequences if she doesn't stop then i leave if she starts yelling the same whatever the reaction is you're prepared and you know how you're going to behave when that happens. And you have that set for yourself. So it's really important where your expectations are. And I know that you could say, oh, but if I'm expecting the worst, the worst is going to happen. It's not about, it's not an anxious expectation. It, it's, it's what I'm talking about is not an expectation drenched in anxiety and fear oh my god she could react like that I know she's gonna react like that that makes you close yourself that makes you um, become small and weak because you're scared of how she's gonna react I know that this is what we like I've been in front of my mother um, and the vast majority of the times that I have been in front of my mother I was expecting her to get aggressive and emotionally very aggressive sometimes physically aggressive so I would have been very scared and very very anxious and that kind of expectations actually draws the worst behavior in the other person for sure but what I'm talking about here is a is a grounded expectation it's a realistic expectation it's like I actually know that that's I now know that my mother, if I challenge her with a boundary, it's going to get aggressive. She's going to try to belittle me. She's going to try to ridicule me. She's going to completely disregard everything I say. She's going to use everything, every word I utter against me. I know that this is what she's going to do. So I'm going to know that I'm going to be prepared for that reaction from her. It's not that if she reacts like that, it's not my failure. It's not that I've stated the boundary wrong. So whenever your mother reacts to a boundary, the way that you know she's going to react, that's not a failure of your, on your part. Because the success of a boundary is not making her understand, is not getting her to get it. It's it's just protecting yourself. So she reacts, that's her thing. But I have my if then. The minute she raises her voice, I'm out. The minute she gets aggressive, I hung up. And that's how I ended up actually being no contact because she got aggressive and raises, raised her voice once too many times. <laughs> and that was the end of our relationship so far. I'm, I'm nearly three years no contact coming October now. So um, that was as a result of a boundary that she didn't really take too well. To. So her reaction is her story. It's her problem. It's her baby. It's nothing to do with you. You prepare by expecting 
that she will react and then set yourself if then. So we said the first mistake is not taking into considerations that we need to prepare, then we stay and then we maintain with consequences. The second mistake is that we misplace expectations. So to try and actually expect the reaction that we know our mother is going to have. The third thing is to actually go about setting boundaries with the, with the intention to changing your mother. I do get questions about the boundary setting very often. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I've done it for years. I, I was um, so involved with my family that all I ever wanted to do was to change every single one of them. I had this illusion that I could I could change them, that I could make them understand, not just my mother, but also other members of my family that have their own version of narcissistic behavior, that I could make them understand and that I could change their behavior so that I would go in and set what I thought were boundaries with the intention to change their behavior. So the questions I get very often is how do I stop my mother from crying when I'm talking to her? How do I set a boundary that stops her from crying? How do I set a boundary that stops her from making scenes every time that we're in certain scenarios? How do I stop my mother from yelling at me when we are uh, at a family dinner? <clears throat> How do I make her understand that this is not a good behavior and that she needs to change? And that is a recipe for disaster. And I am speaking with the biggest amount of compassion possible. If this is what you've been doing, I really, really get it. You're not wrong for, do, for trying to do that. You're a beautiful person with a precious, beautiful, loving heart. And I get it that from that place, we try our best to to change our mothers because we see ultimately that that way of behaving doesn't bring anything good in life but it is a recipe for disaster that is only going to lead you to get more hurt and get more enmeshed and get more caught into the cycle of pain for you especially and it's actually not going to change anything in her behavior she is not going to budge she is not I have not seen my mother in years of me trying to change her shift of half an inch in a different direction. Like genuinely nothing has changed. And I see it all the time with clients too. When we try to go at it that way, it never ever works. Boundaries are not there to change her. They are there to protect you. That's why we set boundaries. You're not there to try and stop her crying. You're there to state you do not accept her playing the victim anymore. If she insists, you implement the consequences. And if when you implement the consequences, she wants to keep on crying, that is entirely her problem. But she'll find she doesn't that much. I always go back to one example that um, at the time, I didn't have any of this awareness. I was really desperate. I was, I think, in my teens. And I was living with my grandmother at the time. And she is a vulnerable narcissist. So very different way of going about it than my mother has. She's never, like, my grandmother isn't aggressive or anything like that. But she e can play the victim role to quite high levels and so my relationship with her has been driven by guilt uh, pretty much for most of my life and she has played a very big role in my life so uh, she's like nearly a second mother well without nearly she's a second mother figure f for me and I am in contact I love her to bits and I have found ways to actually have a relationship with her that works so but when I was a teenager, I remember, well, she used to do that when I was a kid as well. Um, she used to come into my bedroom 
and she used to sort of pretend to have a fit like if I didn't do what she wanted or if someone else had hurt her or whatever she would come in pretend not to be able to breathe and lie on the floor sort of pretending to have lost consciousness to have fainted on the floor of my bedroom and I, when I was very small this was like quite distressing and obviously I was getting very worried and I would try to do my best to help her and I would you know try to lift her up which she was obviously a lot not a heavy person but heavier than me for sure especially when I was a child I was trying to bring her water and apologize to her and, and do all of that and then I cop that that was actually a strategy that there was no reality to it she wasn't actually having a fit so at some point in my teens I still remember I actually literally stepped over her because she used to do that between me and the door so that really I couldn't really get out of my bedroom unless I paid attention to her because I had tried the whole thing of not paying attention and it didn't work because she stayed there lying on my bedroom floor so I remember once I actually just without stepping on top of her but I stepped over her to get out so I left her there um magically (laughs) <laughs> she actually got up and recovered immediately and was absolutely fine. So you'll find that a lot of the time the behavior stops because once you've set strong boundaries, they don't actually use that tactic anymore because they've realized it doesn't work. They're cunning that way. They're they're not going to keep going at a tactic that you are completely so strong in saying I'm not accepting that and there's consequences like I didn't have the capacity or the knowledge at the time I was only 14 or 15 to know I to state I am not accepting you acting like you're having a fit in my bedroom anymore if you do this again I will leave Uh, or if you continue I will leave I didn't have that knowledge but I did it I did it physically. I just went, okay, this was internally, I didn't accept that. I didn't buy into it. That's it. I'm getting out of here. And she got back up. So this is to say, and I know for those of you, especially with vulnerable narcissistic mothers, because I know guilt is a big thing. I, God knows I know about guilt (laughs) because it's been um, literally ruling my life for the best part of my life Um, most of what I've done around my family was always driven by guilt and even when I moved away and put the boundaries in place and I still uh, went to bed every night with like this massive amount of guilt in my system that I had to learn to work with within myself because sometimes even removing them uh, doesn't change anything the guilt remains so I get it I get it I get it when you have had a vulnerable narcissistic mother um, the guilt is a big thing because they've used that she has used that she has really made sure to condition you to feel responsible for her to feel responsible for her emotional system society tells you you are responsible for your mother the woman that gave birth to you how dare you be against her And all of that conditioning is strong. So guilt is a big thing. They are more resilient than we think. Or that they want to make us believe. That's the thing about a narcissist. They will figure out a way to find a different tactic, to survive, to find a different victim. Uh, For sure, they, they can prey on someone else. I have seen that happening myself removing from the picture of some of the narcissists in my family I've seen them shifting their interests to other that weren't implementing their boundaries just as much as I was at the time so this happens all the time so all of this big long-winded side train (laughs) to say that if you are trying to stop your mother from crying, to stop your mother from making a scene, to make her change her behavior. It's not up to you to do that. You can never do that. The only person that can change her behavior is herself. um, And that's her own decision. And it's unlikely to happen. 
So you need to set boundaries to protect yourself. First and foremost, that's the only place, even if you are in a position where you are actually going to be around to help your mother, because I know I get emails all the time from people that have elderly mothers and they're like, but I can't just leave her. She's alone. She's elderly. She behaves really badly with me, but I need to be around to help her. And I get that. I get that. So you can set boundaries to protect yourself while you are in that situation. That is a possibility. You can do that. You can practice and train yourself. So an example of boundaries is if your mother has one of her reactions and she's trying, she's going into crying because she's completely playing the whole victim role. She's trying to guilt you because maybe you've tried already to set a boundary and that's her reaction. Or maybe that's just the way she behaves with you. That's an example of boundary. I'm not doing this anymore. If you start crying, I will leave. Or I will hang up the phone or whatever it is. So you're not trying to stop her from crying and her to change her behavior. And you're not there, okay, mom, my boundary is that I need you to stop crying right now. I need you to stop crying. Can you please stop crying? This is my boundary. I don't accept you to cry, so please stop crying. That is tr- that is being there to try and make her stop crying and change her behavior. And you could be there for hours because the longer that she cries, the more you're going to be giving her attention, the more she's going to win. She has control of your emotional system. She has you triggered. She wins. Even if that escalates and you getting angry at her for crying, she's still winning. So... Instead, what you're doing is you're stating that you don't accept that and you give her a consequence. If you start crying or if you continue crying, I will leave or I will hang up and you do that. If she continues, immediately that's what you do. You implement your consequence. And if that means that she's left in there and you think she's still crying, whatever, that's her thing. The next time you repeat that boundary, so when you meet her again, the same thing applies or you can even go as far as to go I I am not going to meet you again if you continue with this behavior or I'm going to come again to visit you today but be warned the minute that you start crying or playing the victim or whatever I immediately will leave and you know that I she knows that you will because you've implemented the consequences the first time she so she's more likely to respect that boundary now because you've implemented the consequence okay <clears throat> another example of boundary I will be ready to talk to you again when you're ready to have a conversation without yelling at me or without insulting me if that's not possible for you then we won't talk So again, you're not trying, you're not in a situation when she's with you and she's yelling at you and you're, and you're like, please stop yelling. You know, I don't like when you yell, don't yell at me. Can you please stop yelling? That is not setting a boundary. That is giving her attention and giving her whatever fuel to continue with her yelling or to tell you that you're too sensitive, to tell you that she wasn't even yelling and you're already making a scene out of it, to tell you that you are too self-absorbed and to turn the thing around. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do is, if you keep on yelling at me, then we won't talk. And if she does yell still, you implement your consequence you won't talk to her you leave you move away you do whatever it is the consequence that is the only way to protect yourself another example of boundary you're entitled to feel that way but i won't accept this behavior from you anymore if you don't stop crying or insulting or yelling you fill in the blank immediately i will leave hang up whatever so She can feel whatever way she wants. She's entitled to be angry at you. She's entitled to feel like she wants to cry. She's entitled to want to make a scene. I mean, it's her life, but you're not going to take it. That's the change. You're not trying to change her. You're showing her a change in you. You are not taking it. I didn't tell my mother that I didn't want to talk to her ever again. 
because that actually isn't true I can't say that that's true I'd love to be able to talk to my mother in an ideal world I just told her I did not accept her insulting me and yelling at me funnily enough she hasn't actually talked to me since (laughs) so um, clearly it's not possible for her to do that that's okay I can accept that the boundary is in place to protect myself because when she does get aggressive insults belittle and do all of that then I suffer enormously and also as a consequence of that my family my actual family now my daughters and my husband they also suffer because I'm not a nice uh, happy person to be around after a phone call with my mother obviously I wasn't god it took me weeks to recover every time so I need to protect myself and I need to protect them actually they're my responsibility my daughters are my responsibility not my mother that's really important whatever maybe you don't have children and that's okay but you are your own responsibility and whatever is the next generation if you have children they are your responsibility together with yourself that's what you're responsible for your mother you're not responsible for so you're not there to change her behavior you are to show her a change in your behavior you don't accept whatever behavior she's having and there are consequences that's that and i know that that's easier said than done and that's why i'm always telling you it's not a one-time event it's a practice it's a skill and it can be learned it can be practiced it does require something that i know you have which is courage courage is not confidence courage is the energy of your beautiful heart and you have tons of that because you're here because you're still looking for ways to live a happy life that is your life and to improve your situation so courage you have tons and that is what you need to start practicing setting powerful boundaries and the confidence then comes after confidence is something that we build on experiences that go well so that's the confidence when you start i remember i started saying sort of little smaller boundaries with my mother i started setting smaller boundaries with her at different times mostly internal to myself like if she decides to go a certain way in the conversation i'm just gonna excuse myself and hang up the phone i'm just gonna say i'm busy and i'm gonna go do something else i'm just not gonna share the room with her i'm just gonna so there were more internal boundaries but that actually practiced the muscle and gave me confidence because oh i've done that and yeah that worked i felt better afterwards hold on a second i'm gonna try again next time and whoa and it's worked again and i feel better again and that builds the confidence to then being able to set more and more boundaries in a way that works until it actually just becomes your way of doing things and the magical amazing thing is that when you set boundaries i know you've heard me saying this before but when you set boundaries with the big monster which is your mother then setting boundaries anywhere else in your life it becomes so much easier if you're finding yourself struggling to set boundaries perhaps at work or with your partner or uh, with your friends even anywhere anywhere um, when you set boundaries with the big bad monster setting boundaries with anyone else it becomes so much easier so much easier i used to be a doormat everywhere literally everywhere um and since i have managed to sort of put very big nose in front of my mother i feel it's so much easier for me to just speak to my friends or to within my work and then go no you know i won't actually accept that but you know we're good but that i'm not gonna go there this is what we're gonna do instead it gets so much easier so again if you haven't yet downloaded your free uh, boundary setting roadmap do that it's the description is in the episode
the link sorry the link is in the description of this episode and you can have that it's an it's an amazing tool for you to use and being able to start practicing setting boundaries really clearly and if you have more questions on this topic you want to know more you want to share your experience send me an email at matilde at women reclaiming their fullness.me again all the links and my email address and everything everything is in the description of the episode so you can go and check that out and with that i'm sending you lots of love and bye for now